Brothers and friends, Paul Cameron here from SuccessfulMasons.com and currently the Worship Master of Wheaton Lodge number 269. And today I want to talk to you about a somewhat polarizing topic within Masonry, the one day degrees through the Grand Masters Festivals and Blue Lightnings. And there's some very well respected Masons on both sides of this issue. I mean, some feel very strongly that these types of degrees are essential for growth uh, in Masonry. And others feel equally strongly that if we keep offering these one day degrees, it will actually slow our growth and degrade the quality of our membership. And normally I, I try to steer clear of these types of divisive topics like this and uh, just stay focused on sharing best practices for Masonic lodges and, and for Masons individually. But I'm seeing a serious need here for a best practice when it comes to this debate after I saw something very recently that was really, really disheartening, borderline disturbing. And I felt like I had to say something here and hopefully we can affect some positive change through this video. So what I'd like to do here is go over the valid reasons for both sides as objectively as I can. And then I'll share with you what I saw here recently, what actually happened, so you can see how serious this is. And I do think that I've got a solution here, which includes a best practice for you from as far away as a lodge in the province of West Lancashire in the UK. So I hope you'll stick around for that. So let's take a look at both sides. And, and even if you have strong opinions about this one way or the other, I would ask you please listen with an open mind to both sides so we can all have an understanding for where the other side is coming from. And I'll start with talking about the reasons for having these one day degrees. And this goes way beyond just the, you know, well, we're, we need to do this so that we can grow our numbers and uh, that's gonna be the fastest way to do that. You know, that's, that's what I would call the low hanging fruit answer, right? So let's climb a little bit higher and get to what I suspect is the real reason. So in Illinois, we recently had one of these Grand Masters festivals, which is an opportunity to complete all of the unfinished degree work in Illinois and to allow men who have been already voted on and accepted a chance to get all three degrees in one day. But instead of thinking about just that event itself, and I know that's starting to fume <laughs> potentially a few people there, let's start thinking about who decided to have this festival here? Because I think that's going to shed some additional light uh, on this subject. You know, this is someone who is very well respected within the fraternity, right? The, the Grand Master. And I'm not sure if you've ever had the opportunity to meet a Grand Master before or a past Grand Master. I have been very, very fortunate to have had the chance to meet six of them so far. And I think I can safely say, without exception, that every single one of them truly loves masonry, like with their whole heart, right? And they would never do anything that they felt would possibly hurt this fraternity, right? Now, I hope you can agree with that. And I can also very safely say that these men are very intelligent leaders. They wouldn't have been able to get to that position if their peers around them didn't think that they could handle being essentially the CEO of, of multiple uh, organizations. So again, they wouldn't do something that affected so many people unless they had thought it through completely, right? So with that said, why would they want to do this? Now, getting into a, a touch of speculation here, because I am nowhere near and never will be anywhere near the level of Grand Master in Masonry, but I do love Masonry. All right. And, I mean, it's had a very huge impact on me personally in, in a very short period of time. And I can very definitively say that I have improved as a person because I am a Mason. Right. And I haven't been a Mason for, for a long period of time. So I can imagine if I had been a Mason for over 20 years and continuously saw improvements in my life year after year because of what I continue to learn as a part of this organization, I would probably be very passionate about wanting as many other people whom I care about to have the same experience, right? And the, the problem here is that these improvements that you're getting in your life aren't things you can just write about in a brochure, right? And, and not because they're secrets, just because there's no way to adequately convey through words the added sense of confidence or, or security that you feel after having one of these experiences. And I, I'll share with you a couple of quick stories here and, and do my best to explain what I mean by it. But uh, I think you'll see it, it, that I feel very strongly about these things and they were very impactful to me, but maybe who knows if you'll, you'll come away with the same impression. 
If you saw my video called Lessons from Grand Lodge that I put out right after last year's Grand Lodge communication meeting, which ironically today, later today, I'm going to be hopping in the car to head down to this year's annual Grand Lodge communication. So this is exactly one year later. Uh, well, I mentioned in that video that my favorite part of the whole weekend was a, a conversation that I had had with a brother from uh, a lodge in my district. And I had seen this brother around. I didn't really know him that well, but I had the chance to sit and talk with him and his wife for, uh, for, for a while. I mean, I feel like I got to know both of them really well and becomes friends with them, which which, by the way, that is one of the other amazing things about, about masonry. You can meet somebody for the very first time and, and feel like you've got this connection and, and respect and mutual, um, uh, I don't know, courtesy towards each other that you just don't find in everyday life. And, and you know, super quick tangent, another, another thing about this, uh, this old masonry thing. Uh, uh, we had a guy who stopped by our lodge from Arizona here recently. I just happened to be in town, Brother Buchanan, thank you for stopping by. He joined us, it was our first meeting of the year, so it was a very long meeting, and at the end of it, I just I wanted to have a quick conversation with him. I know it was late, but I wanted to keep talking. And I'll tell you, by the time I looked up, it had been like an hour after the last person had left the building. We were just, there was so much to talk about and learn, and it was just a great experience. And you know, how do you write something like that in a brochure? But anyway, back to, back to my story. Uh, after the weekend was over, and I saw him around here and there, and, and we talked on the phone a couple of times, but just very occasionally, well, at Wheaton Lodge, we host a free community event uh, every month to help job seekers to learn how to network for jobs. It's from third Thursday, if you're ever in town, noon to one, we always host this event. Well, about eight months after the last Grand Lodge meeting, we were hosting a job club meeting like we always do, but this time I was able to get a, a really big name speaker uh, for an event like this, and, and he was willing to come in and present for us. And to me, this is a really big deal because I thought it was uh, really important to make sure that this speaker felt welcomed and appreciated and got the, the publicity that he wanted to get. So I really wanted to fill that room uh, with as many people as I could for the speaker. And I mean, this is, after all, it's a volunteer event, right? We're not paying speaker fees. So, uh, and I know this particular speaker is, is accustomed to that. So we really appreciated him being there. So, of course, we talked about it in Lodge, and I got the word out as much as I possibly could, but at the event itself, that brother that I had sat with and talked with him and his wife in Springfield eight months ago found out about this and drove all the way out to Wheaton just to be there to support the event. I mean, wow. And, and, and afterwards, you know, it's always really busy, lots of conversations and things going on, so I only had a chance to talk with this brother for a few seconds, but in those few seconds, he had some really kind words to share. And then, well, he gave me this really nice pen. I mean, this is a, this is a heavy, high quality, nice pen, right? I don't own any <laughs> nice pens, much less a nice Masonic pen like this with the Masonic symbolism and everything on it. I, I, that, was, uh, that was mind blowing to me. Uh, and I have no idea, you know, whether he went way out of his way and specially picked out this pen to to give to me at this event, or if he just has a drawer full of them at home and, and he grabbed one on the way out the door. I am pretty confident that he didn't mean this to be this huge, significant gesture or anything. He was just being nice. You know, if, if you know this brother out of Grove Lodge, James, he's, he's a very nice guy. And, and that's something that he would do. But here's the thing, at that time, I know he didn't know this, actually nobody knew this. I was going through a very difficult situation in my own life personally. And like I say, nobody knew about this. And so when a Mason who I hadn't seen in a very long time drives all the way out to an event that I'm putting on just to offer their support, well, this pen with all its Masonic symbols on it became a symbol of its own to me. You know, and that regardless of what I'm going through or who knows about it, that there's always a fraternity of men out there who actually care and would offer their support if I needed it, right? I mean, I carry this pen around with me almost everywhere I go. If you see me in a suit, I will bet you I've got this pen here with me just as a, a reminder, as a symbol of how great it is to be a part of this fraternity, right? I, I'm sure many of you who are watching this can, can echo many stories like this. And, and that's just one thing for me. I mean, there's so many more, you know, the guy from Arizona coming by or, or like being in a situation here where I felt very strongly that I should react in a, in a very specific way to what was happening. But then to have someone 
who has no vested interest in the situation whatsoever hear about me going through that particular situation and, and come to me and explain why it would be better to take a different approach rather than what he suspected I was probably going to do, which he was right. And then to take that person's suggestion and see it work successfully. I mean, the fact that something like that even happened is amazing. But now I have the confidence to know that I will perform better in those particular situations going forward. And I feel good about the fact that I'll be able to offer that same kind of guidance to someone else when I see them encounter the same situation. Right. How do you write those feelings of support and confidence into a brochure? Right. You, you, you can't. People have to just experience those things for themselves. So when you see hundreds of men who have just stalled in the middle of their degree process, men who are already qualified to become Masons, they're just putting it off in some cases because they don't see the benefit of finishing. Well, a Grand Masters Festival would be a great way to help them to experience what you've experienced and so much sooner than they could have done otherwise had they continued to wait and put it off. Right. And when the people around them start seeing their lives very tangibly improving year by year because they've joined this fraternity, well, they're going to start asking questions about how they, too, can have that experience. Right. And ultimately, that's how we're going to grow this fraternity. Right. The, the self-help industry is booming right now. And if people actually knew what we were doing in these meetings that were actually strengthening character and ethics and morals and and they stopped falling for all these just ridiculous conspiracy theory, just ridiculousness out there that's on YouTube and the History Channel, everywhere else. This this is essentially like one of the biggest to me self-help institutions ever built. And it's we've been doing this for over 300 years. I mean, if people knew that, Imagine how many more people we could help because of the character we're building in these men in the communities. Think about how much better the communities would be that we're living in if more people treated each other with the same level of respect and courtesy that Masons treat each other with on a, on a regular basis. Well, I, to bring this back to the topic at hand, with that level of passion for the fraternity and what's possible and the, the probably the, the unifying uh, aspect of, of getting all these lodges to work together across the state to pull off such a complex event all in one day. I mean, I see that there's some very valid reasons for having one of these one day degrees. I mean, if I was in that position, I suspect I would I would see those and, and be very much for this. Now, on the other side of it, there's also some very valid reasons to not hosting these degrees. I mean, the difference between watching something happen and being a part of it is huge, right? I come from a, a long line of teachers in my family, so I know the old proverb, uh, which is very, very true. You know that, uh, um, what is it? It's uh, tell me and I may forget. Teach me and I may remember. Involve me and I will learn, right? So just to sit and watch degrees like you're watching a play would be a very different experience from actually taking part in the play, right? And that's just the tip of the iceberg as far as the the arguments to not have these degrees. I, I think the, the main concern about the one day degree for many of the brothers that I've talked to is that they miss out on all the work that's being required between the degrees, right? The time and the effort you have to put in to qualify to get the next degree adds value to the process, right? The act of sitting with a mentor and getting all the instructions on, on what everything means and, and how to learn the material and, and even more impactful are just all those spontaneous conversations that inevitably happen when you start talking about the experiences that they've had in the fraternity so far, like a couple of them I've just shared with you. Those can't happen in a one day degree because all that all that bonding takes place between the mentor and the, and the Mason in between those degrees when they're learning to go to one step to the next. It, it's just it doesn't it doesn't happen in the application of the critical thinking about why all these things are being done the way they're being done in the degrees simply don't have a chance to happen because it's all taking place so quickly over there on the stage. Right. So just watching it from the sidelines. I suspect would make it seem like these ceremonies are just very arbitrary, right? And, and understandably, many people feel that doing it this way simply doesn't do justice to the experience that they had when they came in. And to me, that makes complete sense. I see truth in that. 
just as I also see truth in the arguments for these degrees and to have them. That makes sense to me also. But regardless of which side makes more sense, the fact that we are divided on this issue and having this debate is creating a very serious problem, which I got to experience and see firsthand just a few weeks ago. And so what happened was we're, we're sitting around a table and there's a bunch of uh, Masons sitting around just having a conversation and the subject of these degrees came up. And it was interesting because one of the brothers sitting at the table had just recently been through the Grand Masters Festival here in Illinois. And, and I just want to tell you up front, this particular brother, it, it is very clear to everyone around this brother that he is really excited about masonry and he's trying to learn everything he can about it. Like uh, at our new uh, Master Mason class, at our, the, the one we had had just prior to that meeting uh, at Wheaton Lodge, I was trying to explain some uh, specific details about one of the lectures and, and he knew exactly what I was talking about and the references I was sharing before I even had to explain them in detail because he was paying attention, right? This is important to him. This new brother is, at every meeting that we have, he's helping out not only with the lodge, but with the building itself and keeping it maintained and helping us there. It's, I mean, it's, it's just very obvious to everyone around him that he feels he made the right choice by joining Masonry and very clearly that we made the right choice by handing him a petition because he has the character and the morals and the ethics necessary to become a Mason. Well, as we talked about, you know, the one day degrees and the things that some of the more seasoned brothers felt that just couldn't be experienced in a one day degree, which of course isn't the first time that this brother's heard comments like this. Well, this new brother, the, the one I, I'm just talking about, who, who pays close attention through his degrees, who's diligently studying the work he would have been required to study had he gone through the traditional way and whose participation and involvement in the functions of our lodge is very admirable to say the least. And I'm not going to get into comparisons here of uh, other, uh, other members of the lodge and how much they participate. I'll just say that it's, it's very obvious to everyone that this brother's all in. Well, that brother, with a very concerned look on his face, felt it necessary to speak the words, guys, I, I just want you to know that I, f I feel like a Mason, right? As if to say, you know, clearly you don't think I am. But, you know, please tell me what, what else I can do to show you that, that I am and that I'm interested in this because I want to learn. Brothers, that should never happen. I mean, ever. But by having this conversation, the debate of whether we should or shouldn't have these degrees doesn't change the fact that we've already had them. Right. And to say that someone who participated in one didn't get the full uh, the, the full experience of a, of a degree is equivalent to telling them that you feel that they aren't quite a Mason, right? Regardless of whether you mean to say it that way or not, or you mean to give them that impression, that's how it's being perceived, right? So at the very least, you are driving a wedge of separation between you and these new brothers because they are being made to feel like they aren't good enough. Right? I don't know if you've ever had that feeling before, right? You meet somebody and, and you could just tell that whatever it is that you just said you were going to do, they were already convinced that you were going to fail, right? That, that is a horrible feeling. And that's what we're subjecting our own brothers to every time we voice our opinions on these one day degrees. So what I think we're missing here when we focus on the debate is that we're, we're ignoring a much bigger point that really makes this whole debate completely irrelevant. Right, which is the character of the men that we are initiating into the fraternity. And, and I want to use an analogy here that, that's going to help you make the point. And I know, uh, brothers, you're going to understand this. Let's say hypothetically that um, we needed to build a structure of some sort, right? A building of some sort. And we're at the work site and we've, we've got all the materials we need already there. They're already at the, the work site. We just need to build it. And, you know, for this particular project, we don't have to build the materials that we need to then build the structure, right? The materials were already finished before they were shipped to the work site, right? Does that make sense? You with me? So like the bricks, for example, they were already the right size and shape. We didn't have to grab a hammer or a chisel and start breaking off the, the rough edges and things so that they can fit in the structure. They were already prepared for that specific spot and their purpose in the building before they got there and the wood that we're using. 
right? They didn't ship us a, a, a pile of downed trees and then hand us an ax and tell us we gotta make our own two by fours, right? Out of the pile of trees, they, they were already done, right? Well, all we're doing as the builders then in that case is we're placing these high quality materials that we've selected for this work site into the proper position within the structure to contribute in the best way possible to achieving the end result, which is the beautiful structure that we're trying to build, right? Which will be something far greater than any one of those individual building blocks could ever be on their own. Okay, so if that's truly what we're doing here, then the way that the materials got to the work site doesn't matter, does it? I mean, if a team of 15 guys walk to each high quality, already shaped and prepared brick over to the work site one by one, or if 500 high quality bricks that were each already shaped and prepared for their purpose in the structure were all shipped to the site together on one pallet, does that pallet reduce the value of the bricks themselves, right? I mean, if the, if the, the structure ends up crumbling to the ground, right? Is it because the bricks were shipped to the site, to the work site on a pallet, and that therefore their, their character has been eroded, you know, and, and the quality of the material has been eroded? Or, or maybe could it be more the fault of the builder and what he did with those bricks? Right. If, if he didn't follow, follow the designs that on that daily planning board that he had and he just started placing bricks in the wrong spots or or maybe one day there were no plans on that board. Right. But instead of going to look for him, he just kept placing bricks wherever he felt like it. Right. Did, did the building crumble because the bricks were delivered on a pallet or because of the builder? Right. I think the answer is obvious here. Uh, listen, the men that we have already investigated and determined to have the qualities and characteristics we need to fit perfectly into the structure of Freemasonry, we'll continue to have those same qualities and characteristics, whether we bring them in one by one or if dozens of them come in together, right? The quality of the material is the same, regardless of the shipping methods. It's what we do with them once they're here that makes the difference, right? Our job is not to shape the materials of the building or the character and beliefs of the man, it's to help him maximize his attributes and skills in a way that the architect intended those attributes to be used in his grand design, right? So here's my solution on how we can do that and eliminate this debate altogether. First, regardless of how tempting it is to voice your opinion on this issue, let temperance chasten, right? Always remember that it's the debate that causes this problem, not the event. Right? And second, install a process in your lodge that must be followed no matter what, right? After anyone from your lodge goes through one of these one day degrees, you know, Blue Lightning or a Grand Masters Festival, make sure it includes regular new Master Mason classes conducted at your lodge by your own members, right? So they can build that rapport and relationships with the men who are there at your lodge. Make sure that they're giving a, given a schedule that they can work from that they would have to get through all that work that they would have had to do if they had gone through the traditional route. And third, this is the idea that was inspired by a conversation that I had with Brother Alan Cornus of Starkey Lodge number 1070 in Southport in the, the province, province of West Lancashire in the UK. Uh, and the idea was that you can give your new members responsibilities in your stated meeting so that they feel they're a part of your lodge because they are, right? And not putting them into an office, just, just a responsibility, right? I thought that was a fantastic idea that, that they do over there. Uh, and so now at Wheaton Lodge, as part of our lodge kind of setup process before our meetings, we will move the American flag to the west side of the lodge, right, before the meeting. So after that first gavel and we start the meeting, the first thing I do is I ask our newest member uh, to present the colors right, in which he will very respectfully carry the American flag from the west to the east, put it into its proper, proper stand uh, on the east, and then we'll pledge our allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. That's an important part of our meetings now, right, and we have a, um, another new Master Mason take responsibility for the reading of our news from the trowel, which is, you know, all those 
positive announcements about our members. Like if a, a member uh, got a promotion like our, our senior warden did, which is why if you're watching this going, wasn't he junior warden last year? He got a promotion. He's, he wasn't able to uh, be there on Tuesday nights. Um, that's in our news from the trial. Or if our daughter gets uh, accepted into a great college or somebody's son wins a golf tournament, anything positive. And I'll tell you, that idea was inspired by another Mason, right? Works for brother Wayne Spooner, which if you've been watching this channel, you saw one of his videos. Amazing, amazing guy. You should definitely watch that if you haven't already. They have a, a Pillars of Beauty segment. And we could have another Mason lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Whatever it is, they, they may all seem like very small things, but they make a huge difference in the approval and acceptance that new brother feels about himself from the lodge, right? And, and just to further my point from earlier, it's hard to put into words what it means to be collaborating with men all over the world on how to get better. I mean, that's, that's absolutely amazing when you think about that. And, and masonry, masonry makes that possible. So if you have other ideas and thoughts on how to ensure every new Mason, regardless of how they were brought in, gets the best experience possible, please share them in the comments below this video so more brothers can learn from them or send me an email directly because I'd love to talk with you and I'll share with uh, everybody, whatever you're comfortable with us uh, sharing with everybody, uh, the goal here is to make ourselves better, right? And, and this video I know is much longer than um, than normal here, and I do appreciate you sticking around all the way through. Uh, and I do hope that you'll share this video with other Masons so that we can learn, draw attention to this issue, and, and share their ideas with us as well. So again, I'm Paul Cameron. I'm from Wheaton Lodge, number 269, SuccessfulMasons.com. And if you're ever in Illinois, west side of Chicago, Wheaton on a Tuesday night, you are welcome to stop by and say hello because we'd love to meet you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.